Southampton's team from the 2015-16 season is absolutely iconic. So many players from this team have gone on to become established players in the world of football. You've got the likes of Virgil van Dijk, Sadio Mane, Dusan Tadic, Wanyama. So when thinking that I wanted to do a FIFA 16 retro rebuild, only one team came to mind, and that was Southampton. We are going to be taking over the Saints and taking them from Premier League dwindlers, kind of a mid-table side at this point, using the players that are now iconic and making them European champions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a retro rebuild. I've also got a pretty good deal for you guys today. If you hit that subscribe button down below, I'm gonna be giving you guys your very own saint. He's gonna pop down and give you three wishes, so make sure you use them wisely. So here is the Southampton starting 11 that we are kicking off the 2015-2016 season with, of course, some big name players in there, Dulcan Tadic, uh, Jay Rodriguez, Sadio Mane, you've got Jose Fon Stecklenberg, there are some big players. There's one big player that is missing though, and that is Virgil van Dijk. So I want to go ahead and make sure that we sign him because, of course, I've just bought the game again, so I've got the default squads on here. Virgil van Dijk is still a Celtic player at this point, so I'm going to hopefully be able to bring him to the club. But let's go see what we can do with this Southampton side. Kicking things off here, Gardos is the first player to depart the club off to West Ham United. They have... West Ham have their old badge as well. And I mean, it might be a controversial opinion, but I reckon this badge, like teams like West Ham and Manchester City, their badges from this era were a thousand times better than what they are now. Bring these logos back. And there it is, lads. We know how good a defender Virgil van Dijk is right now. One of the best in the world, but we are going to bring him to Southampton on a permanent deal here, signing him from Celtic for £7 million kind of wild to see the growth that he's had. 77 rated at age 24. He's gone berserk. Meanwhile, Harrison Reed, a player that's very near and dear to my heart as a Fulham fan, is headed to Middlesbrough on a season-long loan. Same deal here with Jake Hesketh. He's off to Walsall on a season-long loan. And Shane Long is out of the club on a permanent transfer as we've sold the Irish striker to Aston Villa for £2.9 million. Stephen Davis also off to Aston Villa. £3.6 million for the Northern Irishman. The clean out continues, but it is another loan transfer here. Jason McCarthy off to Cambridge United. Whilst we have signed a big name starting striker, splashing the cash here on a 22-year-old Alvaro Morata, who we have brought in here from Juventus for £27 million. Pounds. Matt Target, another player out on loan off to Derby County for the season. And Fraser Forstar is going to be leaving the club on a permanent transfer as we have sent the English keeper to Goodison Park. And in response, we have upgraded in between the sticks. Anthony Lopez joining us here from Leon for £17.5 million. Pounds. So there we go. The opening transfer window done and dusted. Lacazette going to Man City as well, which is quite wild. But we've brought in Van Dijk, Morata and Lopez. Hopefully they can be big additions for us in this first season. But with the player departures and signings, this is what the starting 11 now looks like. It, it only seems right to have Virgil van Dijk in the center half spot in the back line, but I'm very interested to see what sort of a position we find ourselves in on the 1st of January. So we currently occupy ninth position here on January 1st. The wild thing though, is that Everton are nine points clear at the top of the Premier League table. Maybe selling Fraser Forster the to them was a game changer. But we currently sit in ninth position. We do have a game in hand on virtually everybody ahead of us though. So realistically, we could be sitting ahead of Tottenham if we win our next game, which is definitely a nice spot to be. Gonna get some business to happen here in January, however. It's a transfer that I've made and I'm kind of not happy about it. Jose Font has been sold by the board for five million pounds, but we have replaced him. It's a slight little downgrade for now, but in the future, I'm expecting it to be a nice upgrade. Kurt Zuma joining us from Chelsea for seven million pounds. And that is all we are going to do for this January window. Jose Font out, Kurt Zuma into the club. Just trying to think about what's gonna suit us long-term. But we have finished the season in sixth position, which I think means we get Europa League football next year, which is going to be very nice. I think we're also in the Europa League this year, to be honest. But Arsenal, yeah, that's how much things have changed in the past five, six years. Arsenal have won the Premier League title here. 
Meanwhile, Liverpool finished eighth. And in the relegation zone this season, Stoke City only managing to get 15 points. They are relegated alongside Bournemouth and Norwich. Spurs have taken down Man City to win the FA Cup, however. Man United take down Man City to win the Capital One Cup, now known as the Carabao Cup. Bayern Munich win the Champions League. And it is Schalke. What a fall from grace they've had. Schalke defeat Atletico Madrid to win the Europa League. But look to the left of your screen. Southampton, we have finished in the semi-finals. What a run. We could have been playing Champions League football next year if we had gotten past, like if we'd won that comp. Big, big season though from Jay Rodriguez, our number one goal scorer for the season. 21 goals from Rodriguez. I think every, people forget how much of a beast he was before he had injuries. But that is season number one, done and dusted here with Southampton, with the Saints. We finished sixth in the Premier League. Beautiful to see. Let's keep on building for season two. All right, getting into season number two here, and we are sending the absolute free kick king himself, James Wood-Prowse, on a season-long loan move to Everton. Hopefully get him some growth and get Everton a Premier League title. Also gonna shake things up a little bit here as we sell Gaston Ramirez. 20, like he's been doing okay, but I wanna take things to the next level. So I've sent Gaston Ramirez to Newcastle for nine mil. And Dusan Tadic is headed to Manchester City for 12 mil. Another big name player from our starting 11 out of the side, although he wasn't in the starting 11 that much last season because of Morata, but Graziano Pele is headed to Roma. And we are gonna make the massive signing of Gareth Bale. We are bringing him back, saving him from becoming a bench warmer at Real Madrid, bringing him back to the club where it all began as Gareth Bale returns home to St. Mary's for 55.9 million pounds. 88 rated, that is a monster, monster sign. So yeah, I don't think you guys can hold it to me too much with Gareth Bale being our only signing of the window. That is a game changer of a signing and hopefully can help us take this Southampton side to the next level. But we have Gareth Bale, he's already got up to an 89 as well. With Gareth Bale in the side, that just takes us to the next level. A lot of the players around him need to start picking it up as well, though, because clearly we seem to be a one-man team at the moment. So here we are on the 1st of January, and we currently sit in fifth position. Need to get ourselves definitely above Swansea, who currently sit in fourth. It's so wild to see, like, Swansea, QPR, these Middlesbrough, these even Hull and Sunderland in the Premier League and doing okay. But we are currently sitting fifth. Need to take it to the next level. So, this feels right. Victor Wanyama, just like real life, has made the move from Southampton to Tottenham. I'm not sure the price that they got for him in real life, but we have sold the Kenyan defensive midfielder to Tottenham for 6.5 mil. And in response, we are getting ahead of the curve as we have signed a 25-year-old, Jorginho, one of the best midfielders in football in the past year. We are signing the Italian midfielder from Napoli here for 11 million pounds. So there we go, a one for one swap in the midfield for the January transfer window. Jorginho in, one Yama out. Hopefully that is the difference maker to get the Saints Champions League for. I think that means we finish in a Europa League spot once again, lads. We finish fifth in the Premier League, four points behind Chelsea. This year, it is Manchester United beating out Man City on goal difference to win the Premier League title. Meanwhile, in the... This is... I, I find this quite funny. Leicester City, Aston Villa, and West Ham have all been relegated. You fast forward to modern day football. They are some of the strongest sides in the English Premier League. Like, all of them are top half the table sides. We know the wonderful story about, about Leicester. So, I find that to be quite funny. But, they're all relegated. Arsenal have absolutely romped Tottenham to win the FA Cup. And we've lost the Carabao Cup final 1-0 to Arsenal. Atletico Madrid have won an all-Spanish Champions League final. Meanwhile, it is Schalke going back to back in the Europa League as they take down Lazio on penalty. So there we go, lads. It is all happening here in season number two. Jorginho and Bale, the big additions to the side. Let's keep on pushing and get over that hump towards Champions League footy.
All right, we are coming out and making a massive addition to the side. This was one of the guys I considered signing when I ended up bringing in Jorginho last season. But now we can officially afford to sign the French defensive midfielder, Jeffrey Condogbia. We've brought him in from Inter Milan for 25.5 million pounds. Meanwhile, Jordi Classy is headed to Manchester United. The Dutch defensive midfielder signs there for 8.5. Cedric Suarez also out of the club. The current Arsenal defender is headed to Everton for 7.5 million pounds. Just really trying to take this team to the next level. Can't have like mediocre sort of talents when we're trying to qualify for the Champions League. This guy is definitely not mediocre. It is Fabinho, the defensive midfield legend from Liverpool at the moment. The absolute gun Brazilian is a right back in this game. And we have signed him to AS Monaco or from AS Monaco for 19 million pounds. It's ironic given in this era, the big meme was how Liverpool signed all of Southampton's play as well. I'm using the, uh, not the butterfly effect, but I'm getting in there and changing the course of history, signing future Liverpool players for us. Big additions to the side though. It's just been a one for one sort of window. Condogbia for Classy, Fabinho for Cedric. The squad is going to look so much better. Marat is getting up there. Bertrand Rodriguez, like these sorts of guys are getting up there, but we definitely need to bump it up, especially with Van Dijk and Zuma. Also, I'm surprised the fact that Lopez has not gone up a single overall in the three years that we've had him. So there's definitely a bit of a gap between the top players in our starting 11 and the bottom players. Need to really close that gap this season and get as many players at the same sort of level or close to the same sort of level as Maratha and especially Gareth Bale. But this has not been a good first half of the season as we are regressing at the moment. Currently ninth in the Premier League. The good thing is the fact that we're only five points away from Tottenham. Also, what is going on with Swansea in this video? Swansea again are in a Champions League spot. All right, going to switch things up here. We've sold Jay Rodriguez to Bayern Munich for 13.5 million pounds. What a contrast that is to his current career. And in response, we have signed Memphis Depay from Manchester United. 23 million pounds for the Dutch winger. That is a massive, massive addition to our side. Let's go. Get in there, lads. We have qualified for the Champions League. Sitting in fourth position here, one point ahead of both Chelsea and Tottenham. Swansea bottling top four again, whilst Arsenal win another Premier League title. And in the relegation zone, that would have been an absolute nail biter. Burnley, Norwich, and Hull relegated, but the points, you got Burnley on 32, Norwich on 33, Hull and Watford on 34, Middlesbrough, like this would have come down to the final day of the season and it would have been insane. Chelsea have taken down Everton over to win the FA Cup. Man City have won the Carabao Cup. Oh, this might work out horribly for us. Chelsea have won the Champions League. They were one spot behind us in the Europa League spot. This might mean that we will either have to go through the Champions League qualifiers or we might just end up in the Europa League. I'm not sure how it works back in FIFA 16, but I'm definitely a little angsty right now. Meanwhile, Inter Milan have won the Europa League. Also, West Brom making it to the quarters. We made it to the round of 16, however. There we go. Just trying to continually improve this Southampton side, get us further up the Premier League table. We have finished fourth in the Prem, but let's see if that's enough to get us Champions League football. I swear to God, Chelsea, if you, if you cost us Champions League football, I'm going to have words. So Lopez is just not growing. He wasn't growing, so I'm like, okay, we need to take this to the next level. So I feel like I've said that a thousand times that we need to take things to the next level, but I well and truly mean it this time as we sign Thibaut Courtois for what may just be a club record signing of, no, I signed Gareth Bale for like a trillion dollars, didn't I? But we've signed Thibaut Courtois for 34.6 million pounds from Chelsea. And in response, I have decided to sell Anthony Lopez to Swansea City. Maybe that can get them over the hump and into Champions League football. Hopefully it's not at our expense, but we have sold Lopez to Swansea for 15 mil. That's an L. I have also sold Alvaro Morata to Ajax for 26 million pounds. He said he wanted to leave. I've been trying to re-sign him. He only had 12 months on his contract remaining. So I thought we may as well sell him for 26 million pounds. Now 
rather than having him leave the club on a free at the end of the season. What the hell? The board has signed Rojo, the unannounced signing of Marcos Rojo from Manchester United. Did we sign Rojo without me even wanting to? I swear to God, that better have not taken it out of our transfer budget. So there we go. The club have randomly signed Marcos Rojo from Manchester United for 11.5 million pounds. But we have decided to sign another Argentine. That's why I was so worried when I found out we signed Rojo because I was in the middle of signing Paulo Dybala, which we have thankfully successfully done here. But signed Paulo Dybala for 33 million pounds from Juventus. But I was in the middle of signing him. And I was like, I swear to God, if we've lost 11.5 million pounds, I was about to have an absolute tantrum there, but we've got Dybala into the club. So there we go, lads. Courtois, Rojo, and Dybala into the club. Three big signings, two for the starting 11 and one that I didn't even mean to make, but I'm definitely not complaining given it didn't take anything out of our transfer budget. But this is now what the starting 11 looks like. The signing of Rojo has really thrown up a little bit of a spanner in the works in terms of the defense. Three players, all 81 rated, fighting it out for that final center half starting spot. But it's good to see the likes of Depay, Bale, Condogbia. Like the team is starting to grow. Hopefully that can get us Champions League football and not have it stolen from Chelsea this year. Because like I assumed might have happened, we're in the bloody Europa League again. You're taking the piss, FIFA. Screw you, Chelsea. Good. This is a good start. We currently find ourselves third in the Premier League here on the 1st of January. 38 points tied with United only behind on goal difference. And most importantly, eight points ahead of top. I was looking around at the squad and then I found that Sergio Aguero, I was looking around the transfer market looking for a potential striker to be a backup. And then I realized Sergio Aguero was available on a free transfer from Bayern Munich. So we're going to do just that. We're going to sign Sergio Aguero on a free contract deal. Championi, championi, ole, 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 oh, when the Saints go marching in. Oh, when the Saints go marching in. Moving on, Chelsea have won the FA Cup. We have won the Carabao Cup. Let's go. This is a very successful season here at Southampton. Bayern Munich have won the Champions League. And we have done the treble. We've won the Premier League, the Capital One Cup, and now the Europa League. We took down St. Etienne 3-0 in the final, taking down Lazio Valencia and Inter Milan on the way to the final. That is... An absolutely brilliant campaign. What a season from Memphis Depay as well. Definitely justifying his price tag as he has scored 31 goals and bagged 16 assists. So this season has gone almost perfect. We've won the Premier League. We've qualified for the Champions League. Now let's go and see what sort of damage we can do in season five of this retro read. So, this is just an absolutely brilliant sight. Sergio Aguero, a Southampton player for zero pounds. That is mwah, beautiful. You love to see it. And we have decided to sell Wan Me for 4.4 million pounds to QPR, making another massive addition to the back line. Van Dyke, Zuma, and Rojo have just been fighting it out for that final spot, but. I've decided to up the ante as we sign Matteo Musaccio, the Argentinian center half from Lazio for 27.9 million pounds. And Marcos Rojo has been sold. He's headed back to Manchester, but he's headed to Man City this time for 15 million pounds. Thank you very much to the board. They've essentially given us 15 million pounds because if they didn't sign him last year, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to make this money. And goodbye to Zuma and Van Dyke. It is now the back line of Matteo Musaccio and Rafael Varane as we sign the French defender from Chelsea for £44 million. 88 rated. That is insane. So we are in the Champions League this season into Group G. We've got Roma, Schalke, and Basel. So that is definitely not an easy group. We have absolutely smashed it. I still find it wild how well Schalke are doing in this rebuild, given how bad they are. Like, they're a second division German side at the moment. But we have topped our group, the top of Group G. Zero losses, 14 points. 
who are we facing in the knockout round? So if you look to the bottom left corner of your screen, I don't think it'd be that way, but we have been drawn up against Inter Milan. We beat them in the Europa League semi-finals last year. I think it was like 4-1 or something like that. So we know that we can get across them, across two legs, we can get past them, but can we do it again in the Champions League? Looking to go back to back in the Premier League, but things aren't exactly going to plan here at the start of the season as on the 1st of January, we currently sit four. No business in the January window. So we're going to get right into the Champions League knockout rounds. Away leg at the San Siro for the first leg here. Need to get ourselves some away goals on the board. Need Bale, Depay, Mane, Aguero, Dybala. All these guys to really step up for us. But we're going to get into the first leg. We are going to simulate it as we have a little watch through. The scoreline is going to be a one nil win. Bale gets the goal. We get an away goal. The only issue though is Musashio. Musashio got two yellows, so he is suspended for the next leg. So Van Dyke or Zuma is going to have to step up for us. All right, having the away goal is certainly a nice little insurance plan. Would love to have a few more, but we're going to get into the second leg here. I have elected to bring Zuma into the starting 11 ahead of Virgil Van Dyke for this second leg at St. Mary's. Champions League football Champions League knockout football at St. Mary's for the first time as we are going to simulate and the scoreline is a 2-1 win. We're through 3-1 on aggregate, but there's a lot of yellow cards and most importantly, there's an injury for Paolo Dybala in the 90th minute as well. All right, Champions League quarterfinals time and we have been drawn up against FC Barcelona. They took down Juventus 4-1 in the round of 16. Time for the first leg here at home. So the goal needs to be a clean sheet against this Barcelona side that I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this is the era where they had Messi, so like MSN on top, they had Messi, Suarez, Neymar. So I'm a little anxious. Paulo Dybala is thankfully back. Injury wasn't too bad. Musashio is back, but Rafael Varane is suspended. We're going to get into the first leg here at St. Mary's. And it is a one-all draw. Suarez getting an away goal there for Barcelona, which gives them a slight advantage. So here we go, lads. Away at the Camp Nou, needing to get ourselves away goals on the board. Oh, I'm, a, I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. This Barcelona side is absolutely cooked. We're going to get into this second leg, and the scoreline is going to be a 2-1 win we go through come on lads not even on away goals rule we just go through on aggregate aguero getting the winner against his current slash former side come on lads so four teams remain here as we get into the semi-finals two german one spanish one english we have been drawn up against real madrid however not an easy opponent in the slightest Looking to face either Schalke or Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. But there's certainly a long way to go. Drawn up against an insane Real Madrid side. This was really the era when Spanish La Liga was on top of the game. But we are at home here. So I'm not too concerned. Like obviously, obviously I'm going to be happy if we score goals. But I'm more concerned about keeping a clean sheet here. We're going to get into the first leg against Madrid. This scoreline against the Galacticos. Oh my god! It's a 3-0 win. Fabinho, of all players, getting a brace. We keep a clean sheet. And we have a 3-0 lead. Oh my god. I don't, like, touch wood. Touch the table. Touch the wood. I do not want to jinx it. But Saints fans, might be time to start thinking about booking your flights to the final. All right, it's going to take a monumental effort for us to bottle this advantage. 3-0 up. I'm hoping the fact that I touched the wood is a good indicator. But for me, no injuries, no suspensions, and do not bottle this result. We're going to get into the second leg at this Bernabeu. This scoreline is a 2-1 win. But I am anxious. Varane and Jorginho yellow cards. Please do not be suspended. I think Varane will be all right given the fact that he's already served his suspension but Jorginho, please don't get suspended, brother. So for the Champions League final, we are going to be facing Bayern Munich, who absolutely slapped up Schalke 
in the semi-final. Taking a look around the grounds, it is Monaco who have won the Europa League. Chelsea have won the Premier League. We finish in second position, though QPR got top four as well. Huge from them, but we are going to be playing Champions League football again in season six. At the other end of the spectrum, however, Norwich, Bournemouth, and Hull City relegated. Liverpool, not too far from the relegation zone either. Unfortunately, we lost the Community Shield at the start of the season to Chelsea. Arsenal have won the FA Cup. We were eliminated in the semi. Arsenal have also won the Capital One Cup. They have dominated this rebuild. But... I'm hoping that this is a good omen. We won Copper Europe at the start of the season against Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich are looking for back-to-back -back Champions League titles. But we can prove to ourselves that we can do it again. But here we go, lads. Time for a squad report with this Southampton side. FIFA 16 has been one of my favorite FIFAs in general. There's a whole, like, in terms of FIFAs I played the most as a kid... FIFA 03 was the first ever FIFA I played. I remember just when I started playing football as a kid, my dad bought it for me as a way to actually understand the sport of football. Um, FIFA 06, I absolutely binged. FIFA 09, and then the likes of FIFA 12, FIFA 13, every FIFA since then. But FIFA 16 holds a special place in my heart. This has been a fun time coming back and doing a rebuild on this game. But now it is time for us to get into some gameplay here with this Southampton squad. Do we have enough firepower to get past the might of Bayern Munich? We are about to find out. Champions League final time, baby. Let's go, we're at Wembley. Let's get the Saints a title. Champions League title. Come on. Still trying to figure out how the bloody hell to play this game. I can't even remember what used to be overpowered in this game. But it is Chicharito coming down the line here, putting that one in. Punched away from Courtois. Going to go back there. Thomas Muller. Need to block him. It's a good save at the near post there from Courtois. Come on, let's get ourselves... A go ahead, God. It's a good ball from Fabinho to Sergio. Aguero save from Neuer, and we can't get the rebound. Well, uh, well, it's a few issues already. Coming down the line here. That's a good run made from them. Clear off the line. Just clear it. No, what is that? What the fuck are you doing, Fabinho? I'm pressing X, trying to clear it, and he's fucking kicked it right back. What? Come on, I need a quick equalizer here. I don't know how we can see that goal. But we're pushing through. Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane. Corner here for Gareth Bale. Looking for a noggin in the middle. It's going to go in there. It's going to be Rafael Varane. Who's going to jump above the defense and head that one home. It's an equalizer here at Wembley. Finally. Come on. Good interception there. Come on. Can we get something to kick off the second half? We're a little flat-footed. But that one's gone through to the pie. Not the greatest touch in the world. Let's look for some more support. I see you out wide. Fabinho. Fabinho! Safe from the way. Just trying to defend here, lads. Road going there to Douglas Costa. Who swings that one back. Post! It's hit the crossbar. Clear it. X, X, X. Clear. Clear it again. Oh my goodness gracious me. Come on. Can we steal something? Dybala. Good tackle. Dybala. Gets there first. Dybala. Far out. Well, we're headed to extra time. 30 more minutes of FIFA. I still don't know how we conceded that first goal, though. I was pressing X, aiming out. Oh. Do not let them get anything here. Defend, not against Robin. They get the shot. It's a good block there. Just clear it. Oh, if they ran in there, we were in a bit of strike there. But Aguero down the line. There could be an option for something to happen here. I see that run from you, Mane. We need a perfectly weighted ball. Sadio Mane, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. One-on-one. -on -one. What a save, Manuel Neuer. We've got the corner here. We've already scored off a corner here. Let's see if we can find the noggin of Varane again. We're going to go in. It's a bicycle. Oh, my God. Rafael Varane. The bicycle kick. He's got a brace in the Champions League final. 
and that is one of the greatest goals in Champions League final history. Rafael Varane, oh my god. Come on, yes, Fabinho, my G. Bit of space. Come on, we've got acreage here for Depay. I might play it early though to Sergio Aguero. I see you, Aguero. Get the sweaty goal. Get the sweaty goal. Aguero! We're 3-1 up here in extra time. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Yes. Nice tap on there. Gareth Bale. He's absolutely knackered. Five minutes to go. Gareth Bale trying to get it around there. I was trying to get a good ball in. I probably should have squared to Mane, to be fair. Easily run from Bertrand, though. Depay going there with a long shot. It falls. Gareth Bale. That's going to be the winner. That's going to be the game. 4-1. We got the luckiest bounce in the world there. But Gareth Bale converts, and that should be the game. There it is, lads. That is an insane Champions League final. And that is the Retro Rebuild done and dusted. If you enjoyed today's FIFA 16 Southampton Retro Rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video. Scorpion, kick that subscribe button down below if you're new around here. Oh, my God. Enjoy the old school title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace.